The recently inaugurated new production facility in Nasik is not yet ready to commence production of Tejas Mark 1A aircraft, as the staff at the facility are currently undergoing training, and the procurement of necessary equipment for aircraft assembly is still underway. HAL officials have confirmed that the Nasik facility has the potential to accommodate the production of more than eight aircraft. But achieving this installed capacity depends upon securing a fresh contract for the Tejas Mark 1A. The NASIC facility was intended for manufacturing Tejas aircraft in case of export orders, although such orders have not materialized. However, there are prospects that the facility may be utilized for the production of an additional 50 Tejas Mark 1A for the Indian Air Force, and this potential deal is anticipated to conclude in 2025. The Indian Navy's Warship Design Bureau is actively involved in the endeavor to make minor redesigns to the current Vikrant carrier design, that will enable the second Vikrant class aircraft carrier to undertake seamless operation of mail and hail class UAVs as well as unmanned combat air vehicles. The second Vikrant class carrier will feature dedicated ground control stations to facilitate drone pilots, along with other essential sensors and satellite terminals for long-range connectivity. It will also be equipped to accommodate the landings of unmanned combat air vehicles, and safety nets to facilitate the recovery of smaller types of drones. The new infrastructure redesigns might also be extended to INS Vikrant in the future, ensuring uniformity and competability. Due to anticipated delays in the Project 75I program, the Indian Navy is exploring the possibility of leasing conventional submarines for a period of 10 years. Russia had offered three refurbished Kilo-class submarines in the past. However, due to the Western sanctions on Russia, it is highly unlikely that India will take up this offer. Germany's Tissenkrip Marine Systems has proposed the 2,000-ton diesel-electric Type 214 submarines equipped with their independent propulsion system, and the company has already held discussions with the Indian Navy and the government exploring the possibility of a direct submarine contract bypassing the Project 75I. Airbus has announced that the first C-295 aircraft destined for delivery to Indian Air Force in September, has commenced testing of its self-protection equipment. Airbus has shared a video, showcasing the aircraft releasing its jettison flares, which are integral to the self-protection system that enhances the aircraft's survivability in combat situations. Hindustan Aeronautics is eagerly awaiting a sanction order from the Navy to commence the development of naval utility helicopter based on the Dhruv Advanced Light Helicopter, that will be ready in the next three years. It will incorporate foldable rotor technology for efficient storage on warships, combined with other modifications to enable the helicopters to carry out reconnaissance and surveillance operations. As India plans to speed up acquisition of 18 Predator-armed drones from the US, the Indian Navy is also working towards extending the lease of two Sea Guardian surveillance drones which expires in January 2024. The much-anticipated visit of the US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin to India next week holds great importance, as discussions will center around the finalization of both Predator drones and jet engine manufacturing plan. The navies of India and Saudi Arabia have concluded the second edition of India-Saudi Joint Naval Exercise. The five-day exercise saw the participation of air component of both the navies, as well as interactions between special forces from either side. The two sides carried out tactical maneuvers, search and rescue operations, and an electronic warfare drill to enhance interoperability. <laughs> Oh, my God.